Hello, my name is John D. Ruddy and I am a writer, actor, illustrator and YouTuber. I started work as a primary school teacher, but for the last few years I have been creating all sorts of stuff. The YouTube series Manny Man Does History and have gained over 200,000 subscribers. I continue to keep my hat in the classroom with all sorts of fun talks and workshops, including illustration workshops, drama workshops, comic book creation, an introduction to animation, loads of history talks, including Irish history, world history, and the evolution of weapons and warfare. Loads of stuff. For now, I'd like to give you a little flavour of what some of my workshops are like. So grab a pencil, grab some paper, and we can begin. So folks, today we are going to be doing, uh, we're going to be drawing a Viking warrior. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be uh, just drawing with um, red, just to show you. Now you, you don't have to use red for this, you can just use your regular pencil, but I'm using the red just to show what my rough lines are, um, because uh, I'm going to be rubbing some of these lines out afterwards. Um, so first of all we start with essentially like a skeleton, um, so we can start up here with a circle for the skull, and a bit like, like a half square. Coming down like that. And then we've got the backbone, the spine, and then we've got the shoulders. So see like it's, it's it's a bit like a cross there. And then down here we've got the we can draw a, 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 an upside down triangle for the pelvis. And from there and do our legs and our other leg and this is why we are able to rub things out because the pelvis can actually be a bit higher up on the body there we go that looks a bit better and our arms so this guy, and we do a square for the hands. Uh, so this guy is going to be holding a shield. So that shield is actually going to be covering quite a bit of his body, like this. It's, it's a big circular shield. It's a little bit, a little bit like Captain America's shield, if anyone knows that one. And much like Captain America, it's got these. Um, straps on the inside although we're not actually going to see those straps but i'm just showing you uh right now and we've got the big circle in the middle of the shield uh, it's a big metal piece it's called the boss uh, most of the shield is made from wood but the boss is made from from metal and that's to make sure that um anybody coming at the shield with an axe Hopefully we'll hit the boss and not the rest of the shield. And I'm going to give this guy an axe. So for now, we don't need to worry too much about those details. But this is just, this is our rough picture. The Vikings, of course, they came from Scandinavia. And Scandinavia being Norway, Sweden and Denmark. Um, so this guy's head is you can see it's tilted a little bit to this side or not tilted but turned a little bit to this side so the middle of his face is actually a little bit to the side so we can do a little cross uh, just so we can see where all the bits go so um, his eyes can just go a little bit above the, that cross like that and his nose down below the cross and his mouth then here but again we're actually not going to see a lot of these details because he's going to be wearing a big helmet here we go so yeah these folks they came from Norway Sweden and Denmark they came to Ireland they went to England they went all across Europe 
and they went what they called they went a viking uh, and that was essentially going raiding and so that's where the term viking comes from and um, i'm just gonna rub this out a little bit so you can see clearly what's going on here so we've got this piece which guarded the nose and some um simpler and um cheaper uh, less expensive helmets would just have that nose guard but for someone who had a bit more money they could also get this piece added on to guard their cheeks and it just made the whole thing a lot stronger because as much as it protected your nose sometimes if uh, if, if if something knocked it the wrong way it could actually uh, hurt your nose quite badly so uh, that was a bit ironic um, but yeah there's there's your helmet and a lot of um, Vikings, they tended to have a beard. The way that I like to draw my hair, folks, is you'll notice as well, like all the lines that I'm doing, you know, they're they're not. It's it's not just a individual line like that. You know, I'm I'm doing you know kind of sketching, you know where. And that's it's a, it's a good way to be able to just really get your lines where you want them to, um, particularly whenever you're going to be rubbing a lot of these out later on. But when it comes to drawing hair uh, and like beards or flowing hair, rather than you know using solid lines, uh, this is where I like to you know really just let let my pencil go and just kind of go for a wee wander as i like to say uh so his beard I'm just gonna wander down like this i'm gonna give him uh a, a, a forked beard there was actually a an old viking lord called sven Forkbeard who conquered england right at the end of 1013 and he conquered England and then he died very shortly after that. Um, so here we have some flowing hair as well. Um, now, don't worry if, if you're finding this a little bit tricky, you can just go for go for your solid lines like that. Um, but uh, this just gives you a little idea and just rub a little bit of that out as well so we can see and um, we can add a little bit more detail to the eyes as well for now so that we can see so, and so that he can see ha 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 um that was terrible john but okay <laughs> um actually the back of his helmet can actually come over and cover a lot of his hair so that's okay and we can give him a fancy helmet which has super duper cheek, uh, cheek guards as well so his face is very well protected because um, protecting your face was very important in the battlefield sometimes you get movies where you'll see all these folks going into battle and they won't have helmets and that's because in a movie we need to see who is who is is in the battle um, and it's very difficult to see when everybody's wearing similar helmets uh, but really in in real life you would want to go into battle with your helmet you know it's like riding a bike you need to wear your helmet but also uh, sometimes you will see horns on the helmets do not draw those do not draw those do not draw horns and um, and that is <laughs> So Vikings did not have horns on their helmets, or if they did, only like a couple of them, but very few, no, no, Vikings did not have horns on their helmets. Um, that was, that happened later with the Germans. So the Vikings are like 1400 years ago, like 1,400, uh, 300 years ago. But 150, 200 years ago in Germany, whenever uh, loads of folks were writing these big operas, um, they were making some operas based on Vikings. And those guys thought that it would be really cool 
wanted to make them look, make the Vikings look super fierce, and so they made the Vikings with horned helmets, and loads of people thought, ah, oh, that's what Vikings look like, and so Vikings ended up with horned helmets in so many pictures, so many paintings, and so in some history books, and so loads of people thought that the Vikings had horned helmets, but they didn't. Um, so this uh, is a tunic or, or like a jerkin, uh, which he'd be wearing. It'd be made of leather, and underneath that he can. Well, you can have some of his hair up here, and you can give him some chain mail. We can add the detail of the chain mail afterwards. There's going to be some chain mail down here too actually no this is this is going to be a piece of material underneath his jerkin and then the chain mail can be underneath like that chain mail was essentially it was a big fancy shirt of chains um that uh allowed it it was very flexible it was very flexible armor um and so we can draw the feet down here. Feet can be tricky to draw, folks. So feet take a lot of practice to draw. Now, at the moment, he is looking a bit like he's wearing a pair of wellies. He's not wearing wellies. Um, back at this point, they, he would, they would have been wearing trousers. And those trousers would have been very, very baggy. And so rather than tripping over all of those baggy trousers but a little up um they would then have these uh, tight straps around the bottom of their trousers and so those straps would um would keep their trousers in place um we can zoom in over here we can have a look at the so he's holding his axe so here we've got our thumb our one two three four four fingers he hasn't lost any of them in battle yet but he should be wearing some hand protection but yeah either he can't afford it or he's feeling super confident so most of the axe the shaft of the axe is made from wood and then the axe head itself is made from metal iron and the problem with iron uh, iron's really good for the most part but the problem with iron is you need to take really really good care of it otherwise it rusts uh, which is why in museums um it's quite difficult to get like old viking swords and weapons in good condition because a lot of the um uh, because a lot of the a lot of it's rotted a lot of it's rusted away and rotted away the wood has rotted the uh, iron has rusted so you'll actually funnily enough you'll get like ancient greek swords which were made from bronze they're in better condition than like viking swords which are like a thousand years younger but it's because bronze doesn't rust bronze is fine um, but bronze was a lot heavier. If bronze hit some other piece of bronze, it could break like it was kind of brittle. Um, so iron was just stronger and better, but you just needed to take more care of it. So here is our outline. Um, so now we can add an extra little kind of nice detail. What we call whenever. Uh, if you're making a comic book, what we call inking. So here we can use our, you can use a pen or some kind of marker if you want. Or you could just um, use, use your pencil. Just go a bit heavier on it. This is just Oh, 
obviously I'm doing this on a computer so it'll look slightly different but it's the same principle so while I am drawing this I suppose I can give you an idea of some of the other types of projects that I do um, so as well as this um, I do a really fun talk about the evolution of weapons in warfare which is a lot of fun um, where I start at the Stone Age and work my way up and I have all of these um, kind of cartoon replica weapons so it's all totally totally safe for the school setting for whenever whenever we can finally actually get back in after the pandemic joy um, but then as well I've done some creative schools projects where we have produced uh, an original piece of theatre um, where I came in we did a lot of drama workshops and we created our own scenes and I help guide folks through the creative process. We shipped this really cool fun piece of theatre where uh, we went up to Malinhead. This was a, a school up in Malinhead. So we went up to Malinhead as an introduction and we spoke a lot about the history up there and different things like that. And then based on that, we um, developed uh, some some theater that we could talk about uh, from there and it was really really fun like there was all sorts of different stories and then there was another school that oh here's the chain mail by the way so we can all just do tiny tiny circles it's just chain 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 there's another school where we actually made animated stories where I was able to show folks through the whole planning stage, writing it and recording the voiceovers, doing all the illustrations and essentially kind of making them in a similar way to the way that I make my Manny Mandos history videos. And it was a lot of fun and the videos they produced were fantastic. Um, so that's another option of projects that we can do. Um, of course, that's a lot of these projects are, are more uh, for whenever I can actually come into the school but there are some things some workshops that we can do remotely where I uh, and everybody else are all at a safe distance or if you're at the other end of the country and uh, and, you, and you don't want to pay for me to come uh, the whole way down uh, down the country then you can also uh, we can also organize a remote session as well so that's also convenient because I'm based up in Donegal so it's a little bit of a distance from a lot of the country some reckon that the name Donegal actually came from possibly that there were Vikings that settled near Donegal hence the name Fort of the Foreigners Dunanal for to the foreigners it was possibly viking but then of course the vikings mainly they they set up dublin cork limerick uh waterford wexford wicklow in fact the name wicklow literally comes from the viking language vikinglo which is like a uh, place of the vikings or field of the vikings or something like that um waterford as well comes view the fjord um so they actually come from where a lot of uh, Irish place names they come from the old Irish like Dunnanal is Donegal but um, the down in the southeast some of the place names come from the Viking from the old Scandinavian the old Norse Nordic languages but this is a really fun way to learn about history because 
I well, I mean, I love drawing, so I'm totally biased because <laughs> I love drawing. So of course I'm going to say this is the best way. But it's a great way as well because you get to see a lot of the detail of the costume. Sometimes whenever you look at something, sometimes when you look at a picture, sometimes you don't actually appreciate all of the details. But whenever you actually go about drawing something and recreating it, then you have to look at all the details. And so all of a sudden, you find yourself really taking in all of the details. And historical costume is really cool because you can see how clothes have changed over the time. It's really, really cool. So these straps. So there's like gaps in the straps as well where the, the baggy trousers are like kind of bulging out. So these straps. This this doesn't need to be perfect either. You know, it's it's very rough around the edges. Um, you know, it's not like this very fancy suit of armor, which would have come later in history. Yeah, that evolution of weapons and warfare is one of my favorites. But yeah, I do all sorts of history talks about Irish history, about World War One, World War Two, the French Revolution, the American Revolution. Um, and it's not just uh, if there's any secondary schools listening as well. Uh, I cater for uh, teenagers as well. Um, it's not just uh, geared at primary. You know, because the way that I look at it, it's all about what you bring to it. You know, um, so there are the boots and we can actually do, we can do a little design here. I'm going to maybe like a dragon head, double headed dragon. I've got the, something like that. You can do your own design on it. And whenever I rub out my rough lines, this is what's left. And Shazam! From there, if you want, you can colour it in. So let's see. I might do a quick colour in. Helmet can be. You can have part of it kind of a silver, and maybe these bits as well. Maybe some of it more of it like a kind of a gold. Like that. Now with the Vikings. You know, they wouldn't be wearing big bright neon colors. They'd be wearing very kind of earthy colors. Well, it depends. But generally speaking. And not all the Vikings, but a lot of the Vikings would have a tendency of having kind of blonde hair from Scandinavia. At least that's the, that's the stereotype. And I think this back bit can maybe be made of leather. And the chain mail as well. We can have that as with the gray. Chain mail is really cool because it's actually quite heavy. Because, uh, I mean, it's made of metal. It's tiny little metal rings. And whenever I, I've, I've worn chain mail and whenever you wear it it's like super heavy but you eventually get used to it but whenever then later you take it off because you've you've gotten so used to it when you take it off you feel like you're floating it's so weird you're like ooh and the boss the shield it can be 
And something you can actually do as well for something that's metal and um, might be a little bit difficult whatever with whatever you're using to color but I can do it on the computer but is if you're using like kind of coloring pencil you can like leave a little bit of a reflection so it looks kind of metal like that I think I'm gonna give him a nice strong green tunic what we're going to do once it gets to the end of this is that I can actually um, do some shading but for now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna color this in a very straightforward way it's a little bit like um, Link from The Legend of Zelda he wears a green tunic a lot of kind of brown browns as well because if your clothes were you know had color to them you know you you, you had to get it dyed you know you had to, to to get that color um in your clothes you know you couldn't just go buy it in a shop so unless you had a lot of money you mightn't be able to afford to get all of your clothes dyed and that's why you know the likes of purple was was seen as a as a color of royalty and that's because purple would have been a very expensive dye and so anybody who was able to afford having a purple outfit was was very wealthy And then, I don't know, let's see, will we give him, give him a nice red shield, a big strong red shield. You can pick whatever colors you want, though. This is, you know, this is what I'm picking for mine. And of course, you know, the, um, the symbols on the, the symbols on the shields, you know, they would, you often were to, to look fierce, to look scary. But eventually, shields were used so that people knew who each other was when they were on the battlefield. Because as I was saying earlier, um, everybody wearing helmets and everybody wearing you know loads of armor, sometimes it would be very difficult to recognize who was who. Um, so they started wearing uh, what they called coat of arms, uh, where your family essentially a logo your family logo or your family crest was on the shield so when you were in battle um, people would hopefully know who you were so okay and there we go and what we can do now we can add one last bit of detail and that is a little bit of shading so let's see now. So the big trick about shading is knowing where the light is coming from. So if we imagine that the light is coming from up here, so if the sun is up here, that looks like a very dark sun, but which means all the light will be hitting this side, which means all the shadow will be on this side. So with that in mind, um actually no because we've already drawn the reflection here so <laughs> so we'll say that the light is coming from here which means all the light will be hitting there and all the shadows will be on this side so let's see what happens so all shadows are on this side I guess so. So the light's not getting in here as well. So, and the less light can get in, the, the 
darker the shadow. So there's actually not a lot of light getting in here. So you can you can you can keep you can keep the eye bright if you want. So the light's going to find it difficult to get in there because the helmet's blocking the light getting in there. But little bits of light are getting in. So then this side, the shadows are there. Like that. You can do a little bit of shading here. And again, the light's maybe not going to get past this piece of the helmet, so there'll be a bit of a shadow behind that piece of helmet like that and you can put a little bit there if you want and that bit there and the shield so this bit of the boss is actually you know it sticks out in real life so it'll actually you know cast a bit of a shadow on on it but because the rest of this is um because the rest of this is flat it's it's fine you know we might might put a little bit of shading down here but not too much otherwise it'll look you know um it won't look so flat um up here again some light not getting in there and the light not getting in there so under his arm it's very dark and again and here and it's cool like once one once you really start thinking about it you know where's the light getting to and where is the light not getting to shading actually gets quite easy or at least you know you you, you get used to it and it can really make your picture come to life it can really make it look like pop out of the page if you do it right and so this piece of the tunic here is casting a shadow along the bottom same here this piece of the tunic casting a shadow so it just it it, it just shows you know every, everything is is three-dimensional and you know is, is, is isn't just flat unless that's the style style you're going for and again you know there's no light coming in on top here so this bit's actually gonna be quite dark but then the lights gonna get into the bottom but again not on that side perhaps so There we go. And again, this takes practice. You know, I'm, I'm able to do this very quickly because I've been doing it for years. But I started drawing when I was your age and younger. So, you know, you just you just keep you keep doing it. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And let's see if we zoom out here, see what it looks like. Boom! See, just kind of pops a little bit more. Um, and if you want there's another little level of detail that you can that you can add as well along with the i can actually show you just the difference with and without the shading see just, just adds that extra dimension and look at this actually i can show you some shading without the color see you know it, 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 even, it even makes it look kind of three-dimensional there as well so you know um but another little thing that you can do on top of shading is also dirt as well you know keep in mind that sometimes well you know particularly back back in those days things were dirty so we can add like little bits of dirt you know people be grabbing all sorts of things using their hands a lot so the hands would be dirty be scuffs on their clothes be all sorts of things long you know it doesn't have to be clean 
Maybe there's little pieces where the axe is hit. And so there's all sorts of things. Um, that was one of the big things whenever um, they first made Star Wars was everyone was amazed that everything looked so dirty because up until then whenever like there was a movie based in space it was so clean everything looked like it was just freshly made whereas uh, Star Wars just looked like you know people lived there and so think think about this as well so they're running along the ground or you know there and and so there might be mud flicked up off off the ground so it's just that added layer and there'd be more mud on this side because the shield is pro is literally shielding them on that side so and then of course down here there's going to be tons of it again i'm just letting i'm just letting my hand go mad you know just letting it I'm just making it up you know i'm not thinking too much about it i'm just thinking hmm, where, where where might there be a bit of a bit of dirt and of course now this beautiful pristine shield you know it, it would sort of all sorts of bits and pieces on it you know so it's just not perfect they have all sorts of scuffs and uh, maybe even along the top here uh where people have tried to chop it a little bit you know maybe if there was yeah um we can actually add a little bit more detail into his beard as well if we want to make it more textured like that so there's all sorts of layers of detail and again it's beautiful helmet but it's got dirt on it and see it just adds that extra little that extra little detail that extra little piece of realism so watch this now and zoom out of it just looks this again it's just that extra layer of detail so that's it without that's it with you know it just adds another bit that's it with without the shading with the shading like the color you know so you, you can see and out of curiosity this is it without the without the lines oh there you go oh, that's cool and that's let's see our, our rough picture yeah that was a rough picture so yeah there you go it's a viking for you so there you have it folks if you would like a live workshop from me either over zoom or in person you know once we get back to normal or indeed an entire creative project you can get in touch with me through johndruddy.com or my various social media platforms such as facebook instagram and twitter hope to see you soon